Hello, so today I'm going to be teaching you guys about the history of the modern flute. We're mostly going to be learning about BAME, Theobald BAME, and I've got these three books here. This first book is called The Flute by Philip Bate. It's copyright um, 1969. Then the next book I have is called Musical Wind Instruments by Adam Kars. And then the third book that I've got is called um, The History of the Bame Flute by Christopher Welch. So during the very beginning of flute history, we only really had wooden flutes like this. And they really only ever had six holes and were made of wood. So these were the very first flutes that were ever existing. And they were like this up until they evolved to have one key. Next, during the second half of the 17th century, um, flutes which were conical and had one key emerged. A conical flute is widest at the head, so right here, and tapers down at the foot. As you can see here, the flute is skinnier at the foot and wider at the head. A cylindrical bore gives a more direct projected sound, while a conical bore gives a fuller, warmer sound. And these conical flutes also sounded in D major, so everything was still in D major, not C major like it is today. Now during the last bit of the 18th century, flutes began having chromatic keys. These flutes would have up to eight keys. And now the eight keyed flute, which was pretty much the highest kind of standard of flute that you could have by the beginning of the 19th century was the basis for Bame's flute. And some flute players who were important during this time between the transition from a eight keyed wooden flute to the Bame flute uh, were Louis Lott and Buffet from Paris, and Rudolph and Rose from London. So in this book, Musical Wind Instruments, in the chapter about the mechanics of wind instruments, it talks about the a little bit about the history of the flute and how it transitioned from a wooden flute to what it is now. And while we credit Theobald Bame, with the invention of the modern flute, we do give credit to Richard Cart, who in 1867 modified Bame's flute just a little bit and changed the interlocking of the F, F sharp, and B flat keys. So he just rearranged these keys a little bit. So this book also shows a little timeline that tells us that from uh, 1675 to 1775 the conical flute with six finger holes and one key was the standard. Then from 1775 to about 1850 we start seeing these conical flutes with four to eight holes rather or four to eight keys not holes. And in 1832, the Bame flute was introduced. It was at first conical, but since 1847 and forward, it has been cylindrical. Now, the piccolo also followed uh, Bame's sort of changes to the flute. While the flute and piccolo are both in C now, the uh, flutes of the past have been in the keys of D, E flat and F. 
and this book, The Flute by Philip Bate, also gives credit to Bame for the invention of the modern flute, saying, quote, it was he who fathered the instrument which is used by the great majority of players today, on page 115. There have only been very, 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 very small adjustments and changes to the modern flute since Bame. Now, he also had several different models of his flutes, and one was called the London Flute from um, 1831. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Bam, Theobald Bam as the person, and what exactly did he do to these early wooden and eight-keyed flutes? Well, Theobald Bam was, I believe, was a goldsmith or something like that. Um, I didn't find that in the three books that I read, but I'm pretty sure I've read somewhere that he was something like that. Like he worked with metal or his family worked with metal, but Theobald Bame was a flute, a flute player. So he decided that he wanted to make some changes to the flute. He thought that it could be better and it could be better. So he made it better. The first model of Bam's flute looks a little bit like a clarinet or an oboe. After all, all woodwind instruments are related. Now, in the preface of this book, The History of the Bame Flute, they show us these three flutes, one by a man called Gordon. Now this flute is a lot thicker looking than the other two flutes that are shown. It looks like it's got pretty much the same keys and everything as the Bame flute. It's just a bit wider and thicker. Now the other flute is by somebody named V. Koch. This flute is very very similar to the Bame flute, although I noticed that there are two keys that look very similar to the modern flutes. Trill keys. And this was not on Bame's flute. Now Bame's flute, as you can see, is thinner than that Gordon flute. It's about the same thinness as this V. Koch flute. And it looks, the keys look to be relatively the same as the Gordon flute. So this book tells us that Bame basically experimented with everything that he could on the flute. He experimented with cork joints, springs, leather fittings, sliding embouchure of gold. What could that be? Something that he tried. He tried all kinds of different things, including hole sizes, which is why he added keys, which we actually learn about the keys in this book. This book tells us that the reason why there are keys on wind instruments are because the human hand is too small to fit and cover all of these holes, so we need keys. So on page three of this book, The History of the Bame Flute, we learn that Bame experimented widely with the sizes of the holes on the flute, and he found that the bigger they were, the better the tone was on the instrument. And I guess it was perfect at the way it is now for flutes, because that's the way it is now, and that's the way he liked it, I guess. So, I hope you guys liked this video. Um, I think it's pretty interesting how the flute evolved from these wooden things to modern and having keys. It's really very interesting, and... I uh, hope you learned a little bit about what BAM did to change the flute. There are so many different variables in everything with this instrument and he really experimented with every single one of those variables to create the instrument as we know it now. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and come back for more.